morning and welcome on this blessed Palm Sunday as we gather at North Eaton Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Grafton, Ohio for worship. We're so glad to have you with us today and I hope that you will continue to join with us here on our Facebook page as long as we're unable to meet together in person. We also want to remind you that this coming Thursday we will have our Monday Thursday service here online at 7 p.m. So watch for that live video feed to begin at that time. For those of you who are with us for the first time, you may want to take a moment to join us on Zoom following the worship service. All of you are most welcome there. Here you are always welcome and wanted. So come to Zoom with us. The link will be in the comment section as the video continues to play when we get near the end. Today, we give thanks for the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the U.S. and Canada as our ministries continue to unfold and remind you that this week and next week, you are encouraged to designate a portion of your offerings for the purposes of the Easter offering for the Christian Church. It goes so many places and carries us from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. Those of you who have received our little Lenten kits will find within it a vial with a piece of colored fabric. That vial, if it hasn't been opened, may have a little dot of glue on it, so when it comes time during the sermon to open yours, you may need to just pinch it and twist it a little bit to get that cork out of the way. But we hope that you will join us by whatever means you can find available in some sensory experience. So if you do not have this, which will be a smell experience. Maybe you can light some incense at home or a candle that's scented that you enjoy, or just enjoy the fresh air of God's earth on this spring Sunday. Welcome. We're glad you're with us, and we hope that you will enjoy your time with us. For this is a season of celebration and joy. This is a season when we give thanks to God for the gifts of the earth, including the leafy branches, the coats, whatever it is that you may have at home that you might want to wave as we pass from ourselves to one another and give thanks to God and say, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna. 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 Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Word made flesh. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Open your eyes to see the kingdom God is creating in our midst. Listen now to the word of the gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street, as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. Let us pray together. God, our hope, today we remember that when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, the people shouted hosannas and proclaimed him as king. 
as we bless these palms of victory and cherish these crosses of palm. Help us to recommit ourselves to honor him every day, choose him as our leader, and follow him in the way that leads to new life. This we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God in love and mercy invites us to always trust that we in our failure and our sinfulness might be forgiven. Let us pray. For forgetting your sacrifice or thinking your grace is cheap, for not remembering Jesus, who though he was rich for our sakes, became poor and dwelt among us, content to live a common life, earning his living with his own hands and declining no humble task and like a servant washing the feet of the one who would betray him, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For using the cross as a trinket, forgetting the agony it represents, for not remembering Jesus, who observed good customs, but defied conventions that did not serve the purposes of God, who knew the cost of pride, selfishness, and cruelty, the cost to humanity and to you, who, when he was reviled, did not retaliate, and when he suffered, did not threaten, who emptied himself and carried obedience to the point of death, even death on the cross, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For being callous to human cruelty, forgetting that every victim is a child, for being nonchalant about injustice, forgetting that it still nails innocence to the cross, for not remembering Jesus, but thinking that sacrifice is obsolete, 
forgetting that we still contend against the powers of darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My friends, Christ exercises his kingship not by force or coercion, but by forgiving our sins by his grace, by calming our spirits with his love, and by inspiring our wills by his example. My dear friends in Christ, may we accept this gift of life by living this day in his peace, by opening ourselves to his reign in our hearts, and by gratitude expressed in lavish love in every day ahead. Amen.
once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, its gates were open wide, and Hear the word of Holy Scripture as it comes to us from Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, A woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's nothing in this world worse than being bad at names, and I am certainly among the worst. Those name tags we started using back before the pandemic hit were a real lifesaver for me, because when I'm surrounded with even a small crowd, I get all kerfuffled, and I start slipping in names that don't belong to people, even people I've known for a long time. It's a tough confession for somebody who always wants to mimic the good shepherd who knows his sheep and calls them by name. I can't even blame it on old age, to be honest with you. I've been like this all my life, and it's a hazard. Although it makes me really hesitant to give credit where it's not due or to risk blaming somebody who's totally innocent. So maybe that's a good thing to be a little bit forgetful. Well, I don't know how old Mark was when he wrote this gospel, but forgetfulness or not, he seems to have made an audacious, if unintended, faux pas when he tells us that Jesus proclaimed that the gospel story will always be told 
in memory of a woman whose name totally escapes him. And maybe a name isn't the point, as Mark tells the story. Here's this Messiah who entered into the holy city on Palm Sunday with cheers and festive acclamations, and now he's nearer the day when he'll take his place at the table with his disciples for the last time and soon after be betrayed into the hands of those who plot against him. And he says, she has anointed him in advance for his burial. But a little close look at the history and tradition of Israel and of many, many other monarchies. She also, as a priest, anointed him before he took the throne that he rode into that city for. Since her name is perhaps not as important to Mark, I hope you will forgive me as this bottle holds a scent of something other than pure nard. It's frankincense, an aromatic brought, you will remember, to the young Jesus by those who came to seek him from the east in Matthew's telling of the Epiphany story. Both are very powerful scents, although I suspect you won't get much of a whiff from this little drop or two that's on the cloth inside your bottle, but I assure you, when What's-Her-Name broke open that jar of nard, there was a scent. It was overwhelming, and it touched the senses of everyone in the room. We don't often have incense here in our sanctuary. A lot of you know what it does if you're in a small room with it or, heaven forbid, one of those candle shops where all of the scents come at you at once. Or if you're in a great cathedral, as spacious as it may be, it can be overpowering but also so engaging. The question here, though, is what earthly good did it do? What purpose did it accomplish? When Jesus had come into the city on the back of a donkey, the people in the crowd probably didn't get who Jesus was or what he'd come to do, but then neither did his disciples, who we know the names of, I might point out. But then along comes this unnamed woman who does seem to get who Jesus is, And just as in most of the stories around the Messiah, she's a very unlikely candidate for this knowledge. But she demonstrates her understanding in a way that caused a lot of ruckus with the people who saw it happen. Jesus is at the house of Simon the leper, a scandal in itself, because Simon either had or has leprosy, Jesus is considered unclean just by showing up there. But breaking open this nard and pouring it on his head, that was way over the top. People in the room were scandalized because they saw what she did. And they thought about money. It was about 10 months salary for an average worker at the time. You could do a lot with that much money. But it's like the arguments we've heard through the years throughout the church between installing that pipe organ or that beautiful stained glass versus using those funds for some missional purpose or, more often than that, holding them back for something practical. You know, that ever-impending broken furnace or the leak in the roof that thankfully we do not have. It's as though everything must be either or, that there can't be a way that the church, which has cultivated beauty and the arts and culture, right along with the feeding of the hungry and clothing the naked from its very beginning, could somehow glorify God in its exuberant worship, as well as in mission, and even still keep the lights on? Humbug. Jesus, as he often did, cuts to the heart of what the woman had done for him that day. 
and cuts to the heart of those whose reluctance is so powerful. The named ones, you know, men. It was an amazing fragrance, an overwhelming gift, a sign of glory and honor. And anointing someone's head was something that a priest would do for a king before he takes the throne. It points our minds in all of this toward the mission of the Messiah, the real mission. And above all, Jesus reminds us this woman has done for him what no one else would ever be able to do. She anoints his body for a burial that most of them there didn't even see coming. You will always have the poor with you, but I won't be on this earth much longer. I've shown you, you can and should and must be kind to and deal with those who are in need anytime you want, every time you can. But you're not always going to have me here. And then Jesus wants this woman to be remembered. And he says, I'll tell you that wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has been done will be told in remembrance of her. And it has. Even though we don't know her name, we know what this woman did for Jesus. We know that she prepared him for that path he was to take to the cross and to the grave. And one of the biggest temptations we need to deal with on a day when we hear these two stories you've heard today is to jump from the Palm Hosanna Sundays straight into Easter and the A word without going through that deep valley between those two days. We really must endure the tense moments of this week to be able to fully celebrate the joys that are Easter. This week would be one that would inspire countless artists and authors, thinkers and songwriters for centuries to come. It would move the church to truly do what they were claiming they needed the money to do, pray for their enemies, feed and care for those who were in need, Heal the sick and brokenhearted and pay special attention to those whose bodies throughout the Roman Empire were often neglected or abandoned in the streets after death and give them a Christian burial. These seven days would change the lives of all those who loved Jesus and those who sought to destroy Jesus and most of their names we know. But we can't tell that story without, what's her name? The still unforgotten woman whose lavish outpouring of adoration and love and praise still lingers like the sweetest of perfumes, the most powerful expression of priestly authority in our history, which is now her story, her story. I hope you will enter into this week of Christ's final travel log with faith in the one who will raise him to a life in which he is unbounded by space or time and ever present throughout the earth and ever present with God praying for us when we cannot pray for ourselves. Let yourself be vulnerable to the harsh moments which will bring to a head the ultimate battle of all that is good with all that is evil in this world this week. But not today. Today's a feast day. For now, linger in his presence with her, whoever she is. Simply adore the God of this Messiah who longs to give us all life, beauty, and a scent of the transcendent.
cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd had stripped the green trees bare, and hailing Christ as King aloud, waved branches in the crowd began to fade till only trampled leaves and bark were left from the parade lest we be fooled because our hearts have searched with passing In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you taught your disciples love for one another, love which would manifest itself in selflessness and service. Hear the prayer of your people for our world and all who dwell in it. We lift to you the nations that they may be rebuilt in justice and in peace, and especially this nation and its leaders. Hear our prayer for the nations. We lift to you this earth which you so lovingly created, that as stewards of your gifts we might thankfully use its resources for the good of all. Hear our prayers for your creation. We pray for this neighborhood and for villages and cities around us, that all might work together to strengthen and improve the lives of their citizens. Hear our prayers for our communities. We pray for your church, both here in this faith family and around the world, that this season of Lent might be a time of renewal in faith and mission on your behalf, and that together we may learn the path of servanthood toward all humanity. Hear our prayer for your church. We pray for ourselves and our own needs and the needs of those dear to us whose lives are closely linked with our own. To those who are sick and sorrowful, bring your healing and hope. To the grieving, bring your peace. And to the dying, bring the joy of your promise to us of eternity with you. For these and all our prayers we offer you, trusting in your goodness and your strength. In the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ. Amen. What gifts could we ever pour out upon Jesus today? What can we offer that he has not already given to us? What can we do that God has not already done for us? By Christ's self-giving, God has provided the way to live and to serve. In both his triumph and his suffering, we are lavishly blessed. Through the tithes and gifts we now offer, may we express our longing to serve and to follow him wherever he leads us today.
Lord Jesus, you who expressed your kingship not by taking but by giving, not by demanding but by sacrificing, bless us now as we follow your example in the giving of ourselves in these signs of our lives, poured out in thanksgiving and for the redemption of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God. Time after time you draw us here to inspire us and feed us and save us. Especially when our love fails, you are with us, steadfast and true. You created this world and called it good. You created us to proclaim your good to all. And so we raise our voices in praise of you in the company of all your creatures of heaven and on earth, evermore singing in awe and wonder. Friends, God loved this world so much that in the fullness of time, God sent the Son to live among us and be our Savior. To the poor, he proclaimed good news of salvation. To the prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. In suffering love, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, he destroyed it, making the whole creation new. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. And he provided for us the gift of himself in the breaking of bread. May we who receive this bread, his body, and this cup, his blood, be strengthened in faith and renewed in the covenant until he comes again.
The scriptures today start by Jesus entering Jerusalem. People were singing and shouting praises for Jesus. They were letting Jesus into their hearts. By the next day, Jesus was betrayed and handed over to be crucified. Are we following Jesus only when things are going great for us? Do we deny him when we don't get our prayers answered the way we want them to be? Do we deny our faith when others ask us about our religion? How do we respond? Peter swore he would not deny Jesus. He was one of the strongest disciples. His faith failed him. If his faith failed him, how are we to do better? First, we have to continually be in communion with God. Prayer, conversations, studies, these things keep our connection with God strong. God says, if you ask of me, I will provide. What do we ask for? What are our prayers asking for? Wealth, healing, happiness. How about a better, stronger walk with God? For when you walk with the Lord is strongest, he will provide the rest for you. He will provide for all of our needs. Each and every day, we need to be like the day when Jesus entered Jerusalem, shouting and praising Jesus so all can hear us and we can ask them to join us in praising Jesus and God. For the world is in a lost time, much like when Jesus came and walked the earth. He was bold and reminded them to honor God and care for each other. It is now our turn to remind the world that we have lost our way and to honor God again and bring the lost sheep back to Jesus to be saved. But how do we do this? And how do I know we are still loved by Jesus? First, you see Jesus' love in a friend who comforts you when you are in need. When a stranger helps you when you are hungry or in need of a repair. <clears throat> or when you are just walking and you hear the sounds of nature all around you. God cares for the birds and how much more will he care for us? Jesus gave us the holy sacraments of bread and cup to remind us of his love for us. If you would join me for prayer. Mighty God and Father, we come to you now when the world and its people seem to be at the highest point of being lost. Help us to have the words we need to spread your good news to all that are lost. 
You just need to see the light of Jesus and you will be found. We now come to you to ask the blessing over the bread and cup, which is your body broken and your blood poured out to forgive our sins. As we take these sacraments, let us find the strength we need to carry on with your works, to care for others and help those in need, and most of all, spread your word to all who are lost. We ask these things in your Son's holy name. Amen. My beloved, we have received at the hands of Christ all that we need to sustain us and all that we need to give to this world. Linger this day in his presence. Let the sweet perfume of his own offering be one that touches you everywhere you go. May this day indeed be a joyful feast until we gather again in that upper room and enter with Jesus into the great drama of our salvation. Now go in peace to love and serve God in all that you do, and may God's grace, mercy, and love, love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen.